It was 1713, and France had not done well in the treaty ending the War of the Spanish Succession. The Treaty of Utrecht saw it lose claim to Newfoundland and much of Acadia. The loss of Newfoundland threatened France with a loss of control over the waters entering the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and thus access to the inland colonies of New France. About this time, French seamen found an agreeable deep water harbor on the Atlantic shoreline of eastern Cape Breton, now Nova Scotia. The French fishing fleet began to use this harbor for shelter as a base for processing their catch and to resupply. During the fishing season, several thousand French fishermen used this port. To emphasize the importance of the fish exported to France from this location, its value exceeded that of the lucrative fur trade being conducted to the settlements in Quebec. Thus, the fishery was a high priority for French government support. Additionally, this location would provide the French government with control over access to the Gulf of St. Lawrence and the major French colonies in Canada. Eventually, the new settlement also became a military and naval base for the French Empire and was named Louisbourg in honor of King Louis XV. The king agreed to a plan to build Louisbourg into what would become the largest military fortification in North America. The fortress was 24 years under construction, designed by France's best military engineers. The walls were 11 meters, 33 feet thick in some places and rose 9 meters or 28 feet above a surrounding entrenchment. On the landward side of the fortress, there were stout walls that were surrounded by a marsh, thought to prevent any artillery from being placed within range. The cost of construction was immense. King Louis XV was rumored to have commented upon seeing some of the bills that he should soon be able to see the walls rising out of his west-facing windows in Paris. In 1740, France and England were again in conflict in the War of the Austrian Succession, 1740 to 48. Some English captives who had been held at Louisbourg, upon their release, reported their observations to Governor William Shirley of Massachusetts. They told of low morale, poor food, and notably aspects of poor construction in the walls. They also reported that the high ground around Louisbourg was poorly defended. While military engineers had designed the fortress, private contractors, in order to enhance their profits, made some bad choices. Seawater was used to mix mortar, which was now crumbling. Inadequate water supplies existed in the fortress, both in terms of quantity and quality. In 1745, an expedition of 4,000 New Englanders, supported by the Royal Navy, attacked Louisbourg. They captured the supporting defenses that guarded the harbor entrance and blockaded the port. The colonial army used wide wooden sledges to drag and float heavy artillery over the surrounding marshes. British artillery was then able to fire downward on Louisbourg. On June 28, with parts of the walls breached, Louisbourg, short of men, water and supplies, had no choice but to surrender. In 1748, under the terms of the Treaty of Aix la Chapelle, the British returned Louisbourg to France, much to the disgust of the New Englanders. Defenses were repaired, and the fortress was stocked to withstand a one-year siege. Some of the key issues, however, were not corrected. The water supply had the same limitations, the surrounding hills were not defended, and the weakened mortar was not replaced. In 1756, France and England were again at war. A British fleet appeared near Louisbourg in 1758. The officer given responsibility for the siege was Brigadier General James Wolfe. By June 25th, Wolfe had captured all of the strategic positions around the main fortress, repeating the strategy of the New Englanders 13 years prior. He moved huge cannon onto the still undefended high ground. Louisbourg capitulated. French soldiers and officers had fought courageously. 
but they had been let down by those who had failed to consider quality control in the construction and to ensure essential access to sufficient supplies of clean water. Today, Parks Canada has rebuilt a good portion of the town and parts of the fortress as they were in 1756, including some of the massive walls. It is one of the best places to take a step back in time and see how life was over two centuries ago. As one walks around this site, a proverb comes to mind. He who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. If those responsible for the quality of Louisbourg's construction had done their work well, its history may have ended differently. The sad story of Louisbourg is an example of what happens when integrity and diligence are not part of one's character and decision making. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And for more content like this, please visit our website at tomorrowsworldviewpoint.org.